basically started about six months ago when we got notice basically at Hazel Lane Colliery that we needed to actually finish and clear those, those, those precast units from that particular position. We've made a crane pad here, a substantial crane pad to take the 250 tonne crane. That changed this morning, it's now a 350 tonne crane because the 250 tonne crane is tied up, snowed in on another job somewhere in the UK. So they're giving us a 350 tonne crane. Sadly, at 6 o'clock this morning, I was told that it had broken down in Newport Pagnell something like 5 o'clock this morning, and the fitters were with it, and it wasn't going to be here. It was due here at 6 o'clock this morning, I was here at 6 o'clock this morning, and there was nothing there apart from all the ballast units for the crane. There was 100 tonnes, over 100 tonnes of ballast on two large loads sitting out there waiting for the crane themselves. It was supposed to start at 6 o'clock this morning. I should have had two cranes, a 120 tonne crane at that end and a 250 tonne crane at this end and it would take two hours to rig this one, one hour to rig that one. I've got six low loaders coming in with each of those units coming, they will bring the six over and then five of them will go back for the second load and finish off. We were all going to be finished at about five o'clock this evening. I am reliably informed the, uh, the crane has passed Tamworth services. He's picked up the ballast truck with him and they are travelling up the A5, up the A38 towards Kappa's Lane as we speak. from your point of view? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the weather is obviously a factor, but you know, uh, the logistics have done their thing. Peter's done a fantastic job, so have all the other volunteers. The crane's ready to go, but Mother Nature, as she often does, yeah. has thrown a bit of a span oh, in the okay. works. Yeah. 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 Currently the, the wind has picked up and
and we can't in fact offload any of the wagons with the crane. It's unsafe to do so. Uh, wind speeds are too high. So what we're, we're working out is a plan as to how we move this thing forward into the into the into tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. and actually how we restart again in the morning to to carry on with the lifts, offload the trucks, what we do with the trucks overnight. Um, right. We're talking to the various various parties involved to make that work. Day two of the uh, the operation at Darnford, Darnford, Darnford Moors, and the wind has dropped. Uh, the uh, the crane is back it is back working, and uh, what we have done is actually installed two of the units, offloaded two of the units from the trucks, put them into position. There will be another four going in. The trucks are going back to the far end at Great Haywood for reloading to bring the remaining five out. We have six of the units on site now today. Uh, which is absolutely fabulous, but yes, the wind last night completely scuppered us yeah. and we were unable to lift them off uh, because it's too high. And as you can see, we now have a substantial crane here, fully fully rigged with a super lift with 120 tonnes of counterweight on the, on the back end to lift the 21 tonne units into the canal channel. That's the counterbalance, that's the, the fact counterbalance. that it's reaching so far. And it, reach, it reaches so far. The super lift on there basically is to allow the, the jib strength to lift at that distance. Most of the guys here actually slept in their trucks overnight. They, they, they normally spend, they live in their trucks, these guys, uh, and uh, they, they, they were prepared to stay. You can pull them around a bit. The bottom stuff's in top sticking out, it means it's not level. But grabbing a shovel now, you don't know whether you're going to do more harm or good. Yeah. 
around. We're on the ground. Walking there, ready, everybody. All oh, right, good. Two hours and we've now offloaded all the six, the first units that were loaded yesterday. They're in, in basically in the trench. Uh, they've been offloaded. The trucks have all now gone back to the colliery to go and get a second load. And there are five more units to come in from there. So the trucks are already there. I'm told that the first truck has already arrived at the other end and is being loaded. So we need to wait for probably uh, just over an hour for it to get back here and we will be putting in the remaining five. I'm really quite uh, amazed to be here and see all this work going on. I hadn't anticipated 30 odd years ago that it would be uh, coming into fruition now. Uh, there's so many people involved and I feel very humble for having started this and feel very guilty about the fact that uh, <laughs> it's taking place and all these people involved in the result of everything I started 30 odd years ago. Yeah, Still amazing. it's a wonderful thing to have it all come to fruition like this. It's got to America and New Zealand already. Yes. Yeah. I've got friends in New Zealand that are in the trust and I've got family who are uh, in, uh, in, uh, in America, you see. Yeah. Bought <laughs> me some bacon putties a little while ago <laughs> and I said to the crane driver, I said, I have got any paperwork for the uh, bacon butties to, to give you. I said, yeah, I ought to got you to sign for them. <laughs> Interesting to think that these concrete culverts first arrived at Great Worley 12 years ago to the day, yesterday, 
where we've taken them out again and brought them here to Darnford Lane. Good gracious, that's amazing. Years. Amazing, incredible. <laughs> and hopefully it won't be 12 years before they install them in this road here. I hope not. I sincerely hope not. That's it then. Patrick All King. in? Yeah, brilliant. Everybody well happy? Are you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Great sir. What did Chris do, though? Let me invitation. Christine, you make the best chicken soup ever. Fact. Thank you. <laughs>